What's going on, fishy friends? All right, here we are on a Friday. Um, as you can see, I'm at the office taking a look at the African Cichlid tank, 55 gallon, and we got an unboxing video. Got an order from Cichlid Express. So far, so good. Everything looks like it's packaged well from here. Clearly labeled. Hopefully, uh, I don't even know who delivered this. UPS, FedEx. I think it was UPS. Hopefully, UPS didn't screw anything up. Lots of good warnings here. So uh, let's try a one-handed opening video here and see what we got. Alright. So far, it's very well packaged, insulated. Nice, big, thick, heavy bag. And let's see what we got. All right, everything is a bit moist in here. Looks like there was a bit of leakage. Uh, let's see, we got a cherry red. Ooh. Thankfully, these are all labeled. Here's a Kenya. I think that's how you say that. There is a cobalt blue. Very hard to see in the bag, especially with the meth blue. For shipping. Let's keep on going here. Uh, Hangi? Uh, colors on him look excellent from here. Can't wait to see him once he gets into the tank. These are uh, supposed to be all males. Uh, I don't want to deal with, uh, with fry and new fish in this tank. I got enough breeding going on at home. Here's an OB, I don't know how you say it, Travas? Trewas? Somebody fill me in on that. I'll have to show these again once they're in the tank and acclimating. Very hard to see them in the bag. Red top, Trewas, Trevas. So far everybody looks really good. Now Bino Redface, um, there's more to his name. I forget it. It's interesting. The red face looks very yellow or orange in the bag right now. I'm sure that'll change as the fish grows and matures. Uh, a panga? I am horrifically butchering these names, I'm sure. So if anybody out there knows how to say it the right way and wants to teach me, I'd love to learn. Uh, an Aurora? There's a little yellow lab. Boy, that guy is tiny. Can't even see him. Um, an Afra? Uh, uh, I forgot the whole name of it. There's an abbreviation on the bag here. I'll look it up later and figure that one out. And that leaves us with one more. A nice blue. Looks like all the fish are alive and accounted for. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve fish. Everybody looks good. I'm gonna do a little more scaping on this tank and start acclimating these new fish to add to the three I got in there. Is it the Mason Eye, uh, Blue Manda Dolphin, and. Hmm, an electric blue Johanny, if I remember? Something like that. There's one of them. There's another. These guys are very skittish. Um, right now, I think adding a few extra fish is going to help. They're doing a little picking on each other as it is, and hopefully all the rumors I've heard have been true, and overstocking African cichlids, especially in Boonas in a tank, helps cut down on that aggression. All right, I'll keep checking back in as I deal with this process. All right, here we are. Uh, I'd love to say a little while later, but it's probably about two hours later. Changed around the hardscape. Uh, did a pretty big water change. Doing a water change here is very difficult. I have like a five gallon water heater at the office here. So I have to, if I want to do a big water change, I have to do it in stages. 
uh, because otherwise when I'm going to fill it back up, all I got is ice cold water. Anyway, I added some more rocks, changed around the hardscape, sort of went a little taller with the rocks and used a bigger variety of rocks. I don't know if I love the way it looks, but I'm going to leave it the way it is for now. The fish aren't going to care what rocks are in there, so long as they have some spaces to hide. The three fish I have in there right now are uh, are exploring. They seem to like the uh, the new layout so far. And there's all the new guys acclimating. I had a bit of a, a problem with my backup AquaClear 70 filter back there. Uh, I couldn't get it to start back up. I, I had to take it apart and clean the impeller four or five times before it finally worked. That's a pretty new filter too. Uh, this is the first tank I've used it on. It is a backup filter for my wet dry sump. Wet dry sump, wet dry filter, I don't know what everybody wants to call it. But there's an overflow box. Uh, you can't see it because of the glare and the reflection. There's a glassholes.com overflow box up there going down to the sump. Uh, it's a wet dry system. And you can see the water's about halfway up right now. I have everything set up down here to run automatically. Uh, I got float switches and stuff for an automatic top-off system. That's my top-off reservoir. And um, that's my little control panel here. The red and the green light up top are for the top-off system. Green light on indicates it is filling from the reservoir to the sump. Red light on on the top means the blue reservoir is empty. And red light on on the bottom means that either the level in the sump has gotten too low for the main pump to work or the water level in the main tank has gotten too high and is in risk of overflowing. That is controlled by the float switch there and there. I got two and there's various float switches down there in the sump that are just a little difficult to see. But anyway, the fish are floating and acclimating and I'll keep checking back in. All right, guys, here we are a few minutes later again. All the bags have been opened. Whatever was double and triple bagged was uh, moved down to one. Um, now every bag has been opened and a little bit of my tank water has been added to each bag. That's sort of my quasi drip acclimation that I do. I open each bag, I roll over the, uh, the top and that helps the bag float, uh, except for when it falls into the filter like that. Uh, and then I grab something like a little cup and scoop a little water out of the tank, slowly pour it into the bag, and hopefully that way I'm helping acclimate the fish to the new water parameters. Um, this way it's not a complete shock, uh, the change in the pH and whatever else might be a bit different than whatever tank they were initially raised in. And that way I'm doing sort of 50-50 uh, with my tank water and whatever water they were bagged with. So here they are floating still, and hopefully pretty soon I will be able to release them into the tank. And the more I look at this hardscape, the more I'm okay with it. Still not loving it, but I don't hate it. I bet the fish will like it. That's all that matters, right? Some of these guys look gorgeous already. I can't wait to see them out in the water out of these bags when there's not a tinge of methylene blue affecting how they look. But they already look very colorful. Everybody looks active and healthy. So fingers crossed everybody is compatible and does pretty well in this tank. Alright, I'll keep checking in once they're free swimming. Alright guys, a little bit later and all the fish are in. I can't name them all. There's a cherry red zebra and some other rimbunas. And more rimbunas. There's another Rimbuna. Oh look, a couple of Rimbunas. That's about the best I can say. I know they're African cichlids, I know they're Rimbunas. That's an electric yellow lab. That's an albino something or other that just went under that rock there. That could be a red top. Trevace? Hangi? I don't know, sooner or later I'll figure out these names. More likely than not I'll make up my own names for them. But everybody's looking good. I'm seeing a bit of aggression already, but uh, that's expected. Everybody's gonna acclimate themselves, figure out what part of the tank is theirs. I'm sure by tomorrow morning, 
The skate will probably look different. The sand will probably have been picked up and kicked around, and caves will have been dug out, and hopefully nobody will have been killed. But that's yet to be seen. So for now, everything looks pretty good. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Comment, rate, subscribe. Don't forget to follow Rich's Fishes on Instagram. And I will talk to you guys again soon. All right, let it.